Missed you last night, Teresa. Yeah, I know. You ain't going to that. I, have all these other I don't blame you. Too. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. It, looking at the film, did Malik maybe have some more opportunities to throw than you thought during the game? And, and with him, how much of it is just the learning curve of timing and being decisive and just trusting what he sees? Yeah, these are great opportunities. These are, these are great opportunities. We said that before we went down to Baltimore. We knew they were going to give us, you know, multiple looks and pressures. Um, and, and there was, I mean, I think it was about as many as we, you know, saw on the sideline and just, you know, there, there's a fine line between, um, you know, standing in there and climbing the pocket and, you know, using some of those drills that they're working every single day and, and being able to progress through. And then there's times where we're going to want them to go and, and be an athlete. And so, you know, there's some things we have to, to work on with our, uh, certainly the timing and, and, and what he's seeing when those throws depend on it. And then there's other times that, you know, I thought he really made some nice plays down the field and, and kept his eyes down the field. But is it a matter of actually seeing it or seeing it and believing it? Or what is kind of the hiccup that, that, you're, that you're seeing? Well, I mean, I think it's just the, the, the execution and, and where his eyes are and his progression. Um, you know, being able to get off of a route when, when it doesn't look good and, and being able to progress through. And again, this is all happening pretty quick and in much quicker um, with, with more consequences in the game than what it's been in practice. I mean, it, it's live and, you know, they're coming to, to get the quarterback when, when, when we drop back to throw it. And obviously, you know, we have to help them out in progression and in, in protection. But, you know, there were some times where, you know, things looked really good. And there were some times where we can, we can go out and practice and clean things up. Organization, the huddle timing, you know, some of the other stuff. Yeah, we didn't have, you know, I mean, we didn't have any issues, I think. Um, I thought he did well there. I thought he was, was coachable. I thought he came over and understood, um, you know, what was what we were trying to get done. Uh, you know, the, the feedback that I've gotten from the coaches, from, from Todd and Pat, were positive. Thanks, guys. <laughs> With Willis, as far as like the athletic side of him, is it tough to? Because I know you want that playmaker, make it eleven on eleven football. But is it tough to kind of balance that with wanting him to make plays from the pocket and and, and play the quarterback? From tough in what standpoint? I don't know what like what tough. Tough as on as me as, or tough so on who? For, for you as a coach? No, I mean not no, not tough. I mean we we've talked. We went in there and talked, and you know anybody that shows up here uh, tomorrow. Uh, with a great attitude and showed a willingness to to play with great effort and, and you know continue to improve. It's it, it's coaching. It's not tough. It's just showing them and saying, hey, you know this is there, and if it's not, you know then progress through or whatever it is for each position. And the guys that you know may not have a great attitude or don't want to be coached or um, you know we don't have many guys like that, and so. You know, we'll coach them and, and fix it and keep working on it. And we're coming up with drills to, you know, get them to, to climb the pocket when, when guys are rushing in the edge and, you know, trusting the, the middle of the pocket and being able to slide. You know, we were just talking about the one where, you know, the, the you know, Brew gave up a little penetration and, you know, being able to, to slide and then climb the pocket and, and find Mason. And so I don't know if he's, you know, had a play like that in practice, but it's something that they rep and that they do each day an individual um, to being able to slide, take care of the football, move up in the pocket, you know, and, and get the ball out, you know, just like on the first play. I mean, we got Racy. We have to hit Racy. You know what I mean? Racy does a fantastic job of getting through the traffic. Um, but then he comes back, and, he'll, and, and he made some plays, and, you know, that's what happens. You, you talked Logan was, was maybe anticipating Godwin staying on an inside. Well, ter you, know, ter you know, I mean, we have to get some help from the receiver. We, we, can't, we can't release in there, and we have to – probably not go there and not try to press and throw the ball there. You know, and then Terry, is, you know, the receivers are coaching them to, to go and do whatever they have to do, you know, especially down there in the end zone to, to break up that pass. So I think there's a lot of people, um, you know, that have to be better on that particular play. Um, it starts with the decision. You know, if you, if you go over there and you don't like it, um, you know, then just try to check the ball down. But, uh, you know, receiver, you know, we don't want him to release inside. And then, you know, we'll just make a great decision and, and try to compete and, and do everything we can to not get that ball intercepted. You mentioned 
mentioned the pressure with Logan. He mentioned the, the pressure. I mean, if he's coming into a game for you, he's he's going to see pressure and have to sort through it and do better than that, no? Yeah, I mean, we're, we all deal with, uh, you know, the mental side of it, you know, the mental side of, of whatever our – individual situation is and um you know co competing everybody's competing for a job and you know, we all have to process that and we have to to work through that and and one of the strengths that that logan has had has been his command of the offense his decisions um you know and i, I would anticipate that that's going to you know improve from from what it was uh last night something that's still an open competition depending on how Logan and Malik might perform? Mm -hmm. How big of a challenge was it, I guess from a number standpoint, personnel standpoint, to, to get your combination on the offensive line, moving guys to different spots, and how you think that group did as a whole? Well, I mean, we got off to a slow start offensively. You know, a couple three and outs, and, you know, with the fumble. You know, and you look at the fumble, um, much like an interception. You know, I, I think that, you know, Tommy could have helped protect the guy with the ball. I think Nick you know, Petit could have helped protect the guy with the ball. And, you know, that, yes, it, ultimately the guy that has the ball is responsible for, for taking care of it. But, you know, we have to, you know, make sure that everybody's seeing this as, as a group effort, as a team effort. Um, and, and they all did some, some good things. And, you know, Brew was able to, you know, I thought his leadership with, with Ben not there or out there, I thought his leadership was something that was probably – you know, the best thing he did last night. And, you know, Jamarco was in there for a little bit. Dylan was in there. And, you know, Nick did some good things and, you know, some plays that they'd all like to have back. How much of the line play was simplified last night and just, hey, block the guy in front of you so that you can evaluate from that way? Well, I mean, it's never just block the guy in front of you. There always has to be some, you know, some sort of scheme and, and some communication, whether they're pressuring and, you know, we're going, you know, whatever way we're working. I mean, you know, once it shakes out, I guess a couple seconds into the play and you've identified who you have, um, you know, then it's, then, it's, then it's blocking them. But I think part of the evaluation process is being able to, to sort through all the different looks and the calls that we have to make, um, you know, the pressure that we're getting. So I think that that's, that's also part of the evaluation is how they're able to handle that uh, as it, you know, shakes out or as it changes throughout the, the, the course of the play. Well, Mike he played a couple of special team snaps. Is that is that somewhere you consider using him or is that a way to test him in a different way? No, I mean, we've, we've always played starters, you know what I mean, uh, where they feel like they can help us, you know, on special teams. We know how critical that is. <clears throat> you know, Kevin Byard's been a personal protector for us. Um, Caleb was, was locked in and, and really did a nice job. Got the guy into a penalty, forced him to to run out of bounds on his own. Use the technique that we're talking about, you know. Twelve ten. Was well, you taking a nap at twelve ten in the afternoon? It says snooze. No, that's that's like you said snooze. But snooze. It's time to wake up. We got eight minutes and fifty seconds. I won't be out here that long. So. Uh, he was really into it, and um, he, he knew to talk to the official. He knew what to do to get that penalty. Uh, again, but there's more to coach there. We have to go and finish. we got to finish blocking the guy. It's only a five-yard penalty, so if the guy goes down there and, and tackles the returner for no gain, um, he, he, you know, the five yards isn't enough. So it was a good start. It was, it was, he was locked in, and he wanted to be out there and wanted to help execute the technique. We just have to finish the block. That, settled, that scramble that Malik had, his last play before you took him out, was that that was kind of like the trigger where it's like, okay, he he has to come out. Yeah, it was like throw that ball or you know we're we, you know we were gonna go on to Logan. Logan, the plan was to have Malik play the first half, Logan play the second half. Wanted to take the football, like I told you, uh, wanted to force you know Malik into, wanted to get this thing going and get him out there and, and compete uh, right from the get go and see how he responded. Um, but then after that, I'm like, okay, we, we put you back out there for the second half. And um, and he knows that. You know what I mean? We, we told him that. We say, I said, hey, we're, we're going to let you go out there. And, you know, we told Logan he's going to start the, you know, Malik's going to start. And, 
you know, we wanted him to rip it, and, and he didn't. And so I'm sure he'll rip it the next time that he has an opportunity. Mike, do you think though, even though Traylon didn't have, have a catch yesterday, how would you kind of assess the work? Uh, inconsistent, yeah. inconsistent. I, I'm really, you know, and I wish that I would have an opportunity to, to talk to Traylon. Um, you know, and I don't think this is going to be anything earth shattering, but just being able to take the progress, the, the some of the improvements that, that we saw in practice, and carry them over to the game, and that that I don't think happened uh, enough, you know. And so, uh, but he was, you know, just talking to to you know Craig Ackerman and. Chase and he was out there. He was active on special teams. He wanted to block on kickoff return. He wanted to be a part of that. You know, I think there were some really positive things as far as our our kick our, our special teams units that, that we can build off. There were some guys that, you know, young guys that we said that they needed to to be productive and show up. You know, Chig played with great effort. Um, uh, Hassan played well on special teams. You know, what I mean, showed up and just improved on some of these young guys that. Maybe that wasn't their primary uh, job in college, uh, trying to take that next step. So um, those are all part of the evaluation process. So we'll need to see, you know, Traylon will have to come out here and have a good week and, you know, keep having a great attitude. Didn't Roberson have a ding or was it part of, part of your plan just not to include him last night? No, I mean, I just would say that everybody that, you know, just working through something, you know, I don't think he was – I don't think it would have been fair to, to put him in there you know, with where he was um, health-wise. Everybody that was was healthy enough to play in the game, you know, played in the game, I, I told you that. I'm proud of that and give those guys an opportunity. What did Chase and show you on that kickoff return? You know, 30 yards is a, is a number you would like, I would guess, yes? Sure. We'll take as many as we can get. You know, he's a, he's a big, fast guy that keeps showing up. He had uh, – you know, had, had the tackle, you know, had, and he made a mistake on kickoff coverage as well, too. But, you know, had the return, had a tackle, had an assist. Um, you know, we'll just keep showing up. And I would say that, you know, he's going to keep earning more opportunities in, in, in both phases, offense and, and special teams. You mentioned a couple of the rookies. Was there one rookie in particular that stood out to you more or exceeded your expectations yesterday? Um. You know, I mean, I think you just look at some of the guys that maybe, you know, have come in from, from the post-draft. I think, you know, Julius did some good things outside of the fumble, um, hustled. His his effort on special teams was noticeable. Um, Dr. Gibby, his effort on special teams is going to earn him more, more opportunities on special teams. Uh, Chig's effort on special teams. That's that's what we're looking for, really, and you know, trying to improve, obviously, in their first in their first job on offense or defense. Chris Jackson going to be all right, or uh, we're still evaluating him, and we'll see where he's at for the joint practices this week. On a night where most of the top guys on defense didn't play, was there something you wanted to see out of Fulton, you know, to get him out there? Well, just the preparation to to go play and you know continue to. Um, String together, you know, I think his best work has been most recent in training camp as far as the practices and um, wanted to try to continue that. I don't know if, you know, that was necessarily the case. It, it wasn't terrible, but I think we were, you know, hold him to a high standard. And um, But he was into it on the sidelines, helping the younger guys after he was out. So, you know, just wanted to try to keep getting those guys some work. You mentioned last night about Julius, you know, putting the ball on the ground first and coming back with that 29-yard kind of angry run. Do you like to see that from a guy to, to not let him earlier mistake bother him and just go out? And well, we all have to do that. You know I mean? We all have to be able to process things and try to find ways to, to not be too high, not, not be too low, uh, to get back to center and, um, you know, go play. I mean, it's a long game. It's, there's going to be plenty of mistakes. Um, and hopefully we can learn from them quickly and, and be able to recover. To seeing Tom, are you disappointed that, that he won't be part of things coming up? I mean, I'm focused on the Titans, Paul, not what Tom's got going Titans on. Are going to go against the Bucks, right? What did you see away from the defensive effort, defenses? Effort uh, I think there were some good things. They're not not enough. I think um, I thought the D line played about what I, you know, had seen in, in training camp and the practices. Um, you know, just not enough 
ball disruption. We didn't do enough to affect the quarterback. You know, there are things that we think are, are critical to, to success is, you know, being able to turn the ball over. We, you know, I thought we stopped the run well early. A little let down there on a, on a run late in the game. Um, but it was good. It was good schemes, plenty of motions, some things that we, you know, can coach from. And, and you know, that's always why you, why you play these games in the preseason. That didn't make the trip. What do they generally do uh, when the team's away, and how much does maybe that time off help them during the? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I hope that we come back and, and we have a lot of speed tomorrow. Um, you know, by all accounts and the conversations that I had with all of them, that they were here, just like we had asked them to be, and the plan that they had, and and the work that they were putting in. You know, they weren't just, you know, hanging out. They they were here, um, whether it was was treatment or. Conditioning, drills, throwing the football, uh, conditioning, you know, lifting film. So they they had they had a full day. Um, you know, we just want everybody to be working uh, when everybody else is. Are those guys around you kind of look at that as maybe leadership opportunities and game situations for other guys who don't normally do that stuff? Yeah, I mean, I would imagine like I mentioned, Brew. Um, you know, Ben is such a, a strong leader up front for those guys and. Not having Taylor or Nate there with loud Brew to, you know, help lead those guys and help get them prepared. Um, I noticed that, um, you, you know, and then just different guys on defense of trying to get get everybody going. Um, yeah, and I kind of I kind of like it, you know. I mean, as opposed to like taking some guys that, you know, we weren't going to play or we knew they weren't going to play in the game you know, focused on the guys that were and try to put everything that we had into them and getting them ready and, and trying to see improvement from them. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks.